Under the study of behavior, first we answer two types of questions. Proximate question, the environmental stimuli of anything that triggers a behavior, that as well as the genetic, psychological, I mean physiological, and anatomical mechanism underlying a behavioral act. So when studying about behavior, the proximate question answers the how does that behavior happen? And the ultimate questions address the evolutionary significance of behavior. In other words, it answers the question of why that happens. Studying about the behavior has many branches, like studying about human behavior or any other. But a study about animal behavior, we call that etology. So now we have all the tools of behaviors and all ready and set, let's explore the types of behavior that there are. There are two types of behaviors. One is FAP and the other one is imprinting. For this video, we're going to learn more about FAP. FAP stands for Fixed Action Pattern. It's a sequence of unlearned behavior or acts that is essentially unchangeable and once it's initiated, is carried to completion. That means the animal, they do something, they do an action because of something that is not learned, it is just, just kind of inside them, innate, and then once it's done, it will not be changed and it will be done until it's completed. So for our first example, a male stickleback fish, they have a red underside. Their behavior is whenever another male stickleback fish is in the territory, they will attack that other male. And how they recognize the other male is because the other male will have an uh, under red side as well. So basically they're just defending the territory. So first for the behavior, we answer the question of the proximate cause which is the how. How is the red belly of the intruding male acts a sign of a stimulus that releases aggression on the male stickleback. So in other words, whenever another male is in a territory with a red underbelly, it's going to cause the original male to attack. A sign stimulus is an external sensory stimulus that causes the behavior to act up. So for example, scientists found out when they did this as a research that it's not only that other male stickleback fish that triggers it, but also if they use any object that has a red underbelly will also trigger this behavior. So let's go back to the definition of proximate uh, question. It's an environmental stimuli. In this case, the sign stimulus in which case is the red underbelly that triggers a behavior. And the behavior that is triggered is the aggressiveness from the original male. And that's the proximate question. It says, how? What causes the behavior? Now we go to the ultimate question, which is, why? Why does this behavior happen? It addresses the evolutionary significance of the behavior, as in, why did it happen? The reason is because by chasing away other male stickle bags, the male will decrease the chance that the egg laid in the territory will be fertilized by another male. Aw, oh, how romantic. So now we put them both together. Etology, the study of animal behavior. Here we have one type of an FAP behavior. And it, our tools is how was the behavior caused and why was it caused. So let's take a look at FAP, fixed action pattern behavior. It's a sequence of unlearned behavior or act. In this case, the male stickleback automatically attack whatever I see that has a red underbelly. And it's essentially unchangeable and usually carried to completion. Okay, let's take a look at another example. So here's another FAP. It's dealing with the gray lag goose. Whenever the gray lag goose sees an egg that's outside her nest, she will methodically roll the egg back into the nest with a series of maneuver using her beak. So what is her sign stimulus? What is the external stimulus that caused her to behave that way? Is anything that resembles her egg. Now scientists also found out that even if the egg slip away or is removed, she will still complete the FAP returning an imaginary egg. So let's go to our how and why. How? How is this behavior caused? Is an egg outside her nest will invoke her to get it back. And as for the question of why, it's just simply protecting her eggs. It's a parenting method. Okay, well, that's pretty much it for FAP, and those are our two examples. 
the rest of this video is going to go more in detail about FAP, so it's going to be more college-based and more about psychological stuff. So feel free to watch if you're interested. This great lag goose, she also has a what is called a double FAP, which means she has an FAP of rolling the eggs back into her nest, and then she has another one is when she rolled the egg back into her nest, if she incubate the eggs and she noticed it is her egg, she will incubate it. But scientists tried like they gave a doorknob or like a, a fake egg and she noticed that she would not incubate it. So that is her second FAP that occurs after she rolls it back. So for the behavior for this gray lag goose, the stimulus is the egg. Another type of stimulus is called a supernormal stimulus. So what happened is scientists use uh, the gray lag goose and they have an egg versus a volleyball and it turns out that the gray lag goose would choose the volleyball instead of the egg. The volleyball in this case is called a supernormal stimulus which means it is it invoked her it elicit a stronger response than the normal stimulus which would be the egg. Another type of FAP is found in frog in the retina cells of the frog eye, it is very movement sensitive, meaning that because of what is in the retina cells of the frog, it what causes the tongue lash action to capture anything that is moving pretty quickly. In that case, it would be fly. So the behavior is the tongue action. Stimulus is any type of quick movement. So therefore, if the frog was surrounded by motionless flies, the frog would die because it would not be able to trigger the tongue lash action. An FAP in human would be human sweet tooth. It's not literally a tooth that is sweet, it's just another way of saying that humans have a uh, favor for sweet stuff. The proximate question as in how, how it happened is basically human develop a sweet taste bud that causes us to eat more sweet stuff whenever we have access to it. The question of why it's because sweet stuff are known to have high energy. So because it has high energy, our body signals us to obtain as much sweet stuff as we can to obtain the energy. So that's why we like sweet stuff and if you have too much of it, you become kind of hyper. Also, when you get to college or in the laboratory, what happens is people grow bacteria and they grow it on a petri plate and a petri or a petri dish and inside the petri dish is has agar, which is a certain type of sugar for the bacteria to grow on. So, bacteria feeds off of sugar. Is it because they like the taste? Maybe we don't know yet, but what we do know is that because sugar provides high amount of energy, that's why other organisms like bacteria will feed off of sugar readily. That's why when you have food that is sweet, it tends to go bad quickly because bacteria are attracted to them. And those are FAP, a sequence of unlearned behavioral acts that is essentially unchangeable and once initiated, is usually carried to completion.